Right Line Trading. Mark, take it away. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, um, for giving me your time on this on the Saturday afternoon. And uh, just first, I want to I'll read this quick disclaimer uh, that all signals of trading opportunities provided both orally, written, or electronically that are disclosed to the user or subscribers for educational demonstration purposes only. Right Line Trading takes no responsibility uh, for any participation by visitors or subscribers uh, in the future sports or stock markets or for any profits or losses um, uh, that may be incurred. Uh, participating in the markets is risky and it should be understood that a person can lose a substantial uh, amount of money, carefully consider your financial position prior to trading. You may want to do your own due diligence, consult a financial advisor. And, and uh, those of us here at Right Line Trading are not registered financial advisors and we're not licensed commodity trading advisors. Now I'm going to skip my, a little bit about um, myself and, and my background and just move right on to the, um, the presentation. Now, um, the first thing I want to talk about a, li a little bit is about Unirenko bars. Um, now what the system runs on is optimized Unirenko. And really, really there are now, I think, five types of bars. There's time, tick, range, Renko, and then there's Unirenko. And the difference between Unirenko and Renko is really, um, is really uh, uh, significant. Uh, Renko bars just create bricks, and there's no wicks. Uh, with Unirenko, you do get a wick, and oftentimes you get a wick intracandle. And those wicks allow you to make a better assessment of who's in control of the market. Um, the bulls are the bears, and you can see these lower wicks are just bear failures. The bears trying to push the market down and then failing. Now, every single market, whether it's a forex market, the futures market, or the stock market, needs its own individualized Unirenko settings, depending upon what you're trading, uh, because you're gonna change the size of the candle. Now, it, it, it takes a little bit amount of work, and what we have to decide is whether it's worth it or not. And the weakness of Unirenko bars, to some extent, well, let's go to the strength first, and that is that they filter out a lot of noise. And if you have powerful leading indicators that are able to signal an entry, they do create, in my opinion, superior trading opportunities as long as they have optimized inputs, which we will give you for any individual market or any individual trading instrument that you decide to trade. Now, their weaknesses have become really insignificant. Now, way back in the day, um, in order to determine who's in, the, who's in control of the market, we used to look at price action. And I think price action is still important to some extent, but I want to talk to you for a second on why, why Japanese candlestick patterns, um, why price action, and uh, why things like Elliott Wave and GAN theory have now really become uh, very weak at, as predicting as to where the market's going to move off the right edge of the chart. And if you look really carefully at Elliott Wave, and I've studied Elliott Wave, and I've studied GAN theory, Elliott Wave based his five pattern um, theory on market, on market psychology. Um, he, he made the assessment that as, as a large group of traders, we're gonna create that five wave pattern. Um, and GAN theory looked at the market as a closed system in which it had an inherent waveform. And Japanese candlestick patterns, obviously creating engulfing candles, dark cloud covers, piercing candles, dojis. Now, and I love Japanese candlestick patterns, but why have all of these become significantly less relevant in today's market? And the reason is that 70 to, 70 to 80% of all price movement is now controlled by institutional money. And once the big banks or the big institutions flip the switch on their computer, whatever hap was ever happening with Japanese candlestick pattern formations 
even price action to some extent, certainly with Elliott wave psychology and GAN theory with, it, with its intrinsic waveform, they're all going to be obliterated. So really the goal of our trading at this point in time is to use prox is to use indicators as proxies that track the direction of institutional money. If we trade with Japanese candlestick patterns and they're working, it's going to be, it's going to be occurring when only the small traders involved, because again, Japanese candlestick patterns and all of these are, are based on one premise. And that is the power of each buyer is approximately equal to the power of each seller. That's as, as Elliott Wave created that five, that five wave theory based on market psychology, uh, Japanese candlestick patterns are creating their form of market psychology based upon every buyer having the same power as every seller. Well, once the institutional guys move in, all of that's obliterated and it really becomes irrelevant. Now, just because you like something, and I really do like to read Japanese candlestick patterns, I like market structure. In fact, we use some of it. Um, you have to ask yourself whether these are things, if you hold on to, um, do they have enough uh, significance to, to drive you to profitability. And you have to remember that what we trade for the most part today is exactly what we've been trading 35, 40, and 50 years ago. We trade um, stochastic, we trade MACD, we trade, you know, this, the same basic um, uh, indicators and nothing's changed, but the markets change significantly. Now, there's a, there's a reason why technical analysis as, a, as an applied science has failed, and it really has failed us. I mean, if we look at medicine, if 95% of all the patients we treated died, if we looked at architecture, and 95% of all the buildings we put up collapsed, and that continued over the course of 40 years plus, we wouldn't allow it. Because what science is, is the testing of what works, the analytical testing of what doesn't work, rejecting what doesn't work, and then keeping what does work so that there's an evolutionary process that takes place. And over the course of the last 40 to 45 years, there have been momentous strides in every single applied science except technical analysis. So if you don't make a radical change or a radical switch to the left or the right, or if you continue down the path that everybody else has been walking down for the past 40 years, you're going to get the same result. The same thing with the rising and falling triangle. Um, it's nothing more than a pattern that shows market sentiment, that the bulls are getting stronger in a rising triangle. You're getting sequential higher lows and sequential higher highs. But once the institutional money comes in, they're going to just completely destroy that pattern and drive price in the direction they want it to go. They don't look at these patterns. They just flip the switch and they, they want to, they'll send crude up 75 ticks or they'll send a stock up 10%. They're gonna do what they wanna do, and they're not looking at any of this. They don't care about it. So for us, we have to put all this aside and decide that we're gonna create a sort of new technical analysis environment, or we're not going to mature, and we're not going to evolve as traders. The old stuff has already been proven, has already proven to fail. And you're gonna walk that 95% plank if you still cling to it and you still grasp it. Now, let me just move forward. What we look at is, it's called our three-line indicator. 
Now we we use some of the same we use some of the same forces that move price, but we just apply them in a little bit of a different way. Now the first one we look at is a fairly new one, and it's called order flow. And I want to go over it quickly um, because I really want to get to the charts, and um, I'm going to have to do a really quick reboot of my computer. Uh, I'm sorry, of my um, of my Ninja Trader before I uh, before uh, I can get the charts loaded, but that'll only take me a second. the The first thing that we look at is market delta. Now, market market delta is an incorporation of volume ladder. Um, it's an incorporation of stack buyers and stack sellers. And what it does is it tells us whether there's an overabundance of buyers or there's an overabundance of sellers on the dome at the close of every candle. And it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a candle, uh, whether you're looking at open, high, low, close, the formation down here doesn't matter. The close of every formation is going to create a market delta number. Now you can see here, this is a positive 29.85. It's blurry, but you can, you can see the magnitude of the number is large and it's green. But there's a, we would make the assumption that this overabundance of buyers would create buying pressure on the candle and it would close to the upside. The problem is that there's an overabundance of buyers here too, but the candle closes to the downside. Now that's an issue that we have to deal with because the volume ladder as leveraged using a market delta value is still extremely important in telling us the direction of the market. Now this is how it's normally done. And if you've noticed lately, there's been a shift away. I mean, this was sort of the rage a while back and everyone was talking about stack buyers and stack sellers, you know, hidden buyers and hidden sellers. Um, but now people are starting to kind of retreat from this because they never really leveraged it correctly in the first place. And here's the reason why. There, aren't, there are gonna be some candles that have a market delta value they close them in the opposite direction of the way you would anticipate they would. Here's a 1464 that's green on a down candle. And uh, here is a plus 348 on a down candle. So the market delta doesn't always tell you the direction that the candle is going to close. And this, this is simply a chart of the absolute difference in market delta values which is not going to have any predictive value off the right edge of the chart. And that's all that we care about is how price moves off the right edge of the chart. We care about nothing else. And what the market delta value fails to take into consideration is the aggressiveness of the buyers and the aggressiveness of the sellers. Now, there was an overabundance of sellers on this candle minus 220 but the buyers were just simply over aggressive and even though there were more sellers here the buyers that executed trades were so aggressive they caused the candle to close to the upside and and to put it in practical terms if the price of this instrument is 50 the buyers are willing to take 50.1 50.2 even 50.3 the sellers will only accept one tick below the price. So the buyers are much more aggressive. Even though there's a negative number here, they're going to drive the candle to the upside. So how do we overcome this? And the way we do is by only taking one standard deviations worth of data and throwing out the outliers. Because 66 and two thirds percent of all the market delta values will predict the direction that the candle is going to close. It does have significant predictive value. It just fails one third of the time. But in order to do that, what we do is we look at only the two higher time frames. Now, in this particular case, I used Unirenko, but it doesn't make any difference. If you trade a three minute, 
it's going to look at uh, a nine minute and a 27 minute. If you trade a two minute, it'll look at a six minute um, and an 18 minute. The, 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 the important thing about the assessment and all of our assessments, none of them look at price on our trading chart because we don't want to use any data from the trading chart. We only want to look at data off of the two higher time frames. That, that's what creates what's called an independent predictor of price movement. If we look at price on the trading chart, it's going to confound the assessment. We don't care what price is doing on the trading chart. We only care what the price and all the metrics are doing on the two higher time frames because they're going to lead price. And that's what creates the leading uh, component of the indicator. So we look at the market deltas of the candles of the two higher multiple Unirenko charts. And again, you can trade time, tick, doesn't make any difference. If you're trading a range and you're trading a five range, it's gonna look at the eight range, which is the next fib. It's gonna look and then look at the 13, which is the next fib. Um, same thing with tick. If you're trading a, a 610, uh, a 377 tick, and look at the 610 tick, then the next higher fib. The algorithm of the indicator always looks at the two higher time frames and ignores the speed of your trading chart. And all of the market delta values are placed into a 15 period simple moving average. And, when, and that simple moving average smooths out the data because you're basing your assessment off the average value of the last 15 market deltas. So when the slope of the 15 period is heading up on both time frames and the lines are green, um, that order flow assessment line will be green and the bulls are firmly in control of the market. And when both of those 15 periods are sloping down, then the bears are firmly in control of the market. And when the 15 periods are not in agreement, you're gonna get a yellow line and it tells you that there's no agreement and you're not gonna trade because it defines CHOP. And CHOP is incredibly important to define because, and you need an objective assessment by which to use in order to define CHOP because the likelihood of getting a winning trade in CHOP is exceedingly low. And our goal as day traders is not number one to get winners. Our number one goal is to avoid losers. And if we can sidestep losers, which is called trading with specificity, as opposed to trading with sensitivity, which is trying to get every winner, but if we, if we trade with specificity, the goal in our heads when we open the charts every morning is my goal is to avoid every loser, then we will make money. So here's an example, and, and um, I will show it to you on the, on the live charts, and I have like seven of them um, tooled. I just need to uh, uh, reload something really quick. But anyway, the order flow line, or those two 15 period SMAs, right here, are they're gonna turn green before price flips. And so as price falls and order flow turns green, price is going to rise. Then the important thing to remember is that price is rising because this line is green. The line is not green because price is rising. Remember, this is not looking at anything on the training chart. It's only looking at the two higher time frames. Now, I took out the time frame of, of the Unirenko candles. I took out the instrument because it's irrelevant. Because this is a force that works universally across any financial instrument and across any time frame. And if any indicator assessment doesn't, then it's broken. If it can't work in any market on any time frame, then, then there is something inherently uh, uh, broken with it. Now, we do use some market structure and the trend is up. So we're gonna wait for the next signal to go long. 
Now, if you want, no, I strongly recommend it. And again, my own personal opinion, to never call a top and never call a bottom. And the traders that do are really going to wind up um, getting taken to the woodshed, as they say. Because there's no mathematical assessment that can call a top or a bottom anymore. A top is called by institutional money, by bank money, by, a, by the computer-generated trades that they trigger. And if you look at a stochastic, it can be overbought for hours, days, weeks, or months. So you can't, all you can do is take a trade in the direction of, in, of institutional money. And the only thing that can create this green line like this is when there is when there is big money involved in the markets. Here's another example. Now you see these traders counter trend trading here and counter trend trading here. Well, they're counter trend trading against the direction of order flow. And they're almost always going to get stopped out. And if you get stopped out a lot, chances are this is why. Um, you're trying to call a top. Order flow has not rotated. Big money is putting tremendous buying pressure on the market. It doesn't matter. Japanese candlestick patterns here are irrelevant. Uh, Elliott Wave, Gantt Theory, even Fibonacci. These are all not going to help you. The only thing that's going to help you is, is to get in early when institutional money kicks in and trade with it. Let the counter trend traders come and move in right after them. So as the price continues up, they get stopped out. And as they get stopped out, they help push the move up in the direction that we want it to go. In fact, I mean, these are just the small traders like us making mistakes. I mean, these, this is not big money creating these two red candles. These, these are just the small, um, the small guys like us trying to call the top and getting run over by the direction of big money. We don't ever want to be caught in this direction again. Here's another example. You're going to get order flow turn first. Price is going to head up. Yellow, we don't trade. Red, we're going to head down. Green, we're going to head up. It's extremely accurate. I'm going to show you that on, on, on charts. Now, remember what, what, I, what I said about CHOP. It's we need an objective way to determine that we're trading in CHOP. Because if we try to trade in a, excuse me, in a choppy market, the prevalence of getting a winning trade is low. And your precision or the predictive value of getting a winner drops significantly during chop. And when the bulls and bears keep trading, keep changing, it means that there's really no big money involved and we want to stand aside. Now you're going to see it's going to get easier and easier to make an assessment of chop as we add lines. Then when we get big money to keep order flow aligned to the upside, price is going to rise. Now we're going to look at uh, momentum, and we utilize the slope of the MACD. And there's lots of ways to assess momentum. Uh, you can use Heikinashi momentum. Um, you can use an oscillator, uh, creates uh, a, mo a momentum assessment. Um, I just like the MACD uh, assessment because it has two events. One is the acceleration of the MACD line away from the signal line, and the other is the crossover of the MACD line across the signal line. So you have two things that occur, and we use them both, even though I'm not going to go into a, a lot of detail about that MACD crossover right now. And what we do is we look at the slope of the MACD line only on the two higher multiple charts that you're trading. And again, although I, I have Unirenko here, it could be any time frame. It could be a four hour bar, a daily bar. It doesn't make any difference. Now when both MACD lines 
are accelerating away from the signal line, the line is green. Because only really large institutional money can create that scenario. When both MACD lines are accelerating towards the signal line, it's red. And when the, when, when the MACD lines are not in agreement, you get yellow. And now what we're going to do is we're going to combine them. And you can see when you get red, red, the top one is momentum, the bottom one is order flow. Now you have a more powerful assessment of direction that you must trade in if you want to get a successful trade. And again, we're, we, are not, we are ignoring Japanese candlestick patterns, all the old style technical analysis that for 40 to 50 years has been sending traders off the edge of the, of the cliff. 95% will go broke using what's been around since the dawn of time. Now here's, it's easier to define chop. And now when you get dual red, or you get dual green, or dual red, or dual green, it's good, it's, price is going to move in that direction because this assessment is off the two higher time frames, and you know that order flow and momentum are both now aligned in the same direction, and price is going to move in the direction that they predict. And what's nice about it is with big institutional money, I mean, it's really operational. You can see all the time on crude and gold. I mean, you know, gold, can, gold and crude can go up 35, 40, 50, 60 ticks. Um, a stock can rise 5%. You can stay in the trade. Um, you also get huge moves on the Forex markets. Um, I haven't traded Forex for quite some time, but I do use the system on stocks and um, on futures all the time. And as long as the lines stay green, you can stay in the trade. And your first reversal candle can be the first down candle or the first candle that's haloed. Well, I'll talk about the halos later, but that first reversal. Now, you're not going to take a counter trend trade, but that could be your exit off the long. And easier to define chop. You need green, green, and red, red. And now at each pivot, where you have to make a decision to trade, it gets easier to see when you shouldn't trade and when you can trade. Now the last force is stochastic. And stochastic also is a little more complicated than I'm gonna describe, um, but you're really gonna get the sort of the meat and potatoes of how the indicator works. And again, we only use it off of the higher time frames. Now it's a bounded indicator. So when the stochastic lines on both higher time frames are plastered long, we believe that the, the bulls are firmly in control of the market. We don't we never look to fade the market and we don't look for divergence. In my in my opinion, a divergent signal worked. 30 or 40 years ago when the, when the market was not ruled by institutional money, now that it is, all you can do is trade in the direction of institutional money when they create so much buying pressure that they keep the stochastic line overbought and that they just plaster it up above 80. Our assessment is going to be, you're gonna get a green line. Now it has to be on both time frames both higher time frames. When both stochastic lines are oversold and that line is plastered below the 20 line, which, which is signifying huge selling pressure present in the market, then we're only gonna go short. Now, when stochastic is between 20 and 80, the line is gonna be determined whether by whether or not the stochastic line is above the signal line or below the signal line. 
If it's above the signal line and accelerating away, our stochastic assessment is green. If it's below the signal line and accelerating away, the line is red. And when both stochastic lines are not in agreement, then the line is yellow and we don't trade. So now we have three lines. And you can see that it's very, very difficult to make an assessment. This happens to be the Dow. So what we do is this. When, with all three lines in place, the assessment becomes a little bit confusing. And we're looking for an alignment of momentum, stochastic, and order flow off our two higher time frames, i.e. a multi-time frame alignment in momentum, stochastic, and order flow. We just project those results onto the candle halo. And you can make that candle halo any color you like and any thickness that you like. So you don't have to look at the three line anymore because we want the workspace to be as clean as possible. Now, I believe, so you'll notice right here that the candle halo, I made it um, yellow or, or gold. That's when the three line is aligned to the downside. When it's blue, it's aligned to the upside. And when it's black, or there's no alignment at all. So if you look here, you can see on this down candle, we have an up three line. And that's your cue on the first up pivot. You're gonna take this trade long. We have counter trend traders. Now, I'm gonna exit on the reversal candle, but I'm gonna go right back in on this up candle because it's haloed in blue. I have order flows, order flows to cask and momentum in my direction. And it's, it's an assessment based off the two higher time frames. And that, and listen, this triple screen assessment is based on, uh, is based on what, I, what I read in 1997 in a book by Alexander Elder called Trading for a Living. And he was a guy who, who made millions of dollars in the stock market um, back in the day when there was no sophisticated charting platforms, no sophisticated anything. What he did was line up three oscillators and look at three screens and waited for them all to align. And his book, which you can get on Amazon for about $5 as a used copy, Trading for a Living, really talks extensively about the triple screen method. And that's essentially what, what we are looking at here. And Alexander Elder did not care what an indicator on your trading chart was doing. He only cared about what the two higher time frames were doing. Now for him to do that was a lot tougher. And he didn't day trade or swing trade. He was more of a long-term holder. So it was easier for him to make an assessment. But we're using the same methodology that he used. And it really does predict market direction. Now here's an up candle we can't take because it's, it's surrounded in black. And remember, remember off the right edge of the chart, when we're dealing with specificity or our desire to avoid losers and not get into every winner, this is a winner that we're just not gonna be able to get into. And we can't have any FOMO or fear of missing out. We can only take the low risk entries. Our, our job as day traders or swing traders is to avoid risk like the plague. I mean, I mean to be allergic to it um, and to treat it like, like if you're allergic to peanuts, uh, if you eat any and you go into anaphylactic shock, you don't want to accrue risk. Just don't have an entry here, you don't take it. Because on the right edge, this, this trade will come right back at you. So up it goes. No, I, we don't call tops. But this is what happens when order flow and stochastic and momentum reverse. Now, they're not strong enough to call a top because institutional money may not be done and may push the market higher. But in a trend trade, they're remarkably precise. 
the candles haloed in yellow or gold, and down it goes. This up candle is black, there's no alignment, and it's doomed. To the downside, we've got the halo, and we, we can take the straight short. Except we're not taking any of these straight short, and I'll show you that later when we set up a little bit of market structure, which is, a, which is just a generalized way of trading and part of our methodology. Here's another example. You have an up candle with a down three line. It's telling you look out below because this long trade has probably got no legs. And you can see the next down candle gives you an entry. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the reasons why even though we do have the three line aligned, we're not taking it. Here's the trade we're looking for short, right here. And here's the trade we're looking for short right here. And this is what we savor or salivate over are the other small traders like us taking a long candle when order flow stochastic and momentum are aligned to the downside. Remember, we will never take money away from the big institutional guys. They always win. We go out there every morning and open up our charts, whether it's 6 a.m., 2 a.m. if you trade the European session Eastern, 9 o'clock or 9.30 uh, if you trade the NYSC uh, Eastern. The only money that you're gonna take home at the end of the day is from the other small trader. And you wanna catch these guys doing things like this, doing things like this, creating counter trend trades, and, they're, and, and we wanna run them over, stop them out, and have, the, and have it help us push the market in the direction we want it to go. We never wanna be caught like this, ever. Now, we can make the workspace even cleaner by removing the three line altogether. Because all that matters is the candle halo. Now, it's up to you whether you wanna leave the three line in or not. You can use it. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't really wanna go into it in this webinar, but the three line assessment is a little more complex because for momentum, it does the assessment of that, of that MACD crossover that I didn't get into. And the candle halo is the, is the product of that entire assessment. For um, um, stochastic, it's also a little more complicated. And the candle halo is the product of that assessment. So this is the best signal to look at. And we want you to, as traders, not to focus on three lines, which are moving intracandle below the chart, but to focus right on price. Not, take, you know, not having to take your eyes off of it is important. So what we can do is just eliminate the three line and just look at the halos. Now, I, I really did show you this chart before. And you can see we've got the long entry. We've got the long entry. We've got the short entry. Actually, I didn't show you this chart before. All in the, in the direction, the multi time frame assessment of order flow stochastic and momentum. And we don't care about Japanese candlestick patterns. We don't care about Elliott Wave, Gantt Theory, Fibonacci. All we care about is harnessing the direction of big institutional money, getting in as early as we can, creating a little bit of market structure, but essentially using that multi time frame alignment of order flow stochastic and momentum to call our direction. And this, this chart I did show you before, here is the entry short. This really is no entry. And oh, there is no entry short here because you can see the candle's black. And there's no entry here because the candle halo is black. Here's your entry. And these are the two juicy moves. The trend is down. And I, I have it, you know, created a 50 
period moving average to give you any market structure here, which is why we're not gonna trade long. We don't have a long signal here, we do have one here, but you're gonna, you're gonna see other reasons why we wouldn't take it. But these are our two primo entries, here and here. And, and no matter what we're trading, a stock, a future, or Forex, we're gonna make really, really nice money. Now, we don't know the time frame. I mean, uh, on, a, on a Unirenko, this could be a 60 Unirenko. This could be 60 cents per candle. So this could be a really, really big move. Um, it's irrelevant, the size of the candle. I, again, it's operational on any time frame. Now, we use an exponential oscillator, which does use uh, data from our trading chart. But in order to take the oscillator entry, everything, has to, everything else has to be in alignment. And the reason I use an exponential oscillator is that a standard oscillator doesn't move fast enough. <clears throat> so I took the standard stochastic formula and raised it to the second power. And here's the 50 line. In fact, oops, here's the 50 line. I have a slide here. It must have slid off the chart. This, this magenta line, every time the percent K line crosses this 50 line to the upside, get an up triangle. Every time it crosses to the downside, get a down triangle. Forget these, these are oversold signals, we don't use them anymore. Um, and I, I had traders who wanted to keep them on when I took these slides, but I'll uh, just ignore. Up candles on red, we just, we're just looking for a down. There's an up candle. I'm sorry, an up triangle off the cross of the magenta line, and there's a down. Now, there are rules that govern our entries on these. First of all, the triangle has to come within one or two ticks of the pivot. So it has to be either here or here or here. And you have to have the three line. When it comes in the middle of a move, we can't take it. And it has to be a trade in the direction of the trend. Now, here are examples. Now we've got market structure. You have a 50. And that 50, this is a 50 exponential. And above the 50, we can only trade long. And below the 50, we can only trade short. That's one of the rules that we never break. And you can see we've got a long signal right here. The candles haloed in blue, price rises. 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 We're never going to look at a counter trend signal or a short signal below the, above the 50. And we're never going to look at a long signal below the 50. A lot of them work, but they're just not predictable where the, these are very low risk, potentially high reward trades. And if you look at the, that, that slide, you can see, and you can even predict which are gonna be the juiciest moves. Because the trade that comes right off a of mean price is the one that's gonna move the furthest. And as you lift off of the mean, off the 50, the trades are gonna, in general, tend to get smaller. This one's fairly far off the 50, they're gonna get smaller. This one's second tightest to the 50, and that's our next longest trade. So we wanna trade as tight to mean price as we can, <clears throat> excuse me, because regression to the mean is still a force that's operational and will always be operational in every closed system like every financial market. The tighter we can take a trade off a of mean price, in the direction that we want, with an entry signal, with order flow stochastic momentum aligned in our direction, the safer we're gonna be. This is a messy slide, but again, down, 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 and down. We take no counter trend trades long, and below the 50, we only go short.
Now, again, when order flows, stochastic, and momentum, stay green. You can stay in this trade a long way. Now, when I cut this slide off, the last candle was haloed in magenta, which may have heralded the end of the move. It looks like it did. You see, you see how stochastic the exponential oscillator just dropped off? And we've got uh, red on the um, line two is uh, um, stochastic, and line three is order flow. Line one is momentum, we lost them all. And this is probably the end of the move. But you can stay in a long time as long as institutional money creates all the buying pressure that's reflected in this multi-time frame assessment of these three forces. And here's another trade, right on an oscillator signal. I, this one, whoops. This one, oh, there was an oscillator here. This one also, right off an oscillator signal. A really beautiful down trade. Now, I also wanted to show you that you can trade it on the Forex. And here I changed it to a five minute. Now, the entry is off the right edge of the chart. I don't, I, I, I'm, I don't know why I did not include that. And I apologize when I, when I, when I clipped the slide. But you can see that the candles are all, there's no red halo. They're all haloed in blue. Now, the amount of risk you want to take on the trade is up to you. But this was a 90 pip move, always in the direction of order flow, stochastic, and momentum. At, a, at certain times here, there was no alignment. But no alignment is not an, indicate, not, not an indication to leave. A down alignment is an indication to leave. So if you were willing to take significant, a little bit more risk than I would have, you would have gotten the whole 90 pip move. And here's the, here's the dollar yen for 21 pips. <clears throat> and this is order flow stochastic and alignment, order flow stochastic momentum aligned all the way up. And I put this on a two minute. Just to show you, it doesn't matter what you're trading. Range, Renko, time, tick, it's, it, it works universally across, across any time frame. Now, that's a special offer for another, for another webinar. Now, let me just quickly tweak my workspace and bring up all my charts. It'll only take me about 30 seconds. You always need to tweak it right, right during a webinar. Um, but this will just take me one minute. Right. So it's the old adage, if something, if something can go wrong, it's gonna go wrong right before a webinar. Okay, hang on, I'm sorry. Hang on one second. halfway done and then let me let me finish the other half and we're, and we're good to go when, when it was closed on Friday I don't know why but ninja trader wasn't closed appropriately okay we should be done all right let me look let me uh, let, let me boot Okay, here we go. Uh, let me bring over, let me wait for the workspace to populate, which should only take a minute. I know I only have eight minutes, so I'm not gonna run over. Now I trade this every morning, and if you come aboard, you're gonna trade with me. And our goal every day on two contracts only is to make $1,000 a week. We have some traders in the room that trade, trade 20 and 10 contracts. I keep the amount of contracts I trade small 
because most of the traders in the room trade a small account. And I want to be, I want to stay with them. I just don't want to overdrive them. Just taking a minute to populate because I've got a lot of charts. It's, it's going. Slowly but surely. It's loading. But you know what? I don't see it loading and I don't know why. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to just open it and put in a template. And it should load immediately. Hang on one second. I'm sorry about this. Let me open this up. Not loading. Hang on one second, one second.
Hey, Mark, are you still there? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm here. Oh my God, I know it's off. Yes. I was actually going through this really quickly. So <laughs> I'm just, thank you. I'm showing you the three configurable entries. And I'll just give you five more minutes. I would really, really appreciate it, David. Um, so, and, so I was talking really quickly about our pivots, which are created off candle body, off the candle bodies, not the wicks, and these buy sell zones, which are multi time frame assessments um, based on order flow, whether there's an overabundance of buyers or, or an overabundance of sellers. And the third, which I'm going to have to do re rather, rather quickly, is this is the multi time frame alignment of the instrument you're trading. This is when you're going to get your best trades, when you have a dark pink or dark green background. When your instrument, like if you're trading Google and it's aligned multi time frame to the upside, that's when you're going to get your best longs. When it's aligned multi time frame to the downside, that's when you're going to get your best shorts. And you, we don't trade into these buy sell imbalances. Now, if you, if you come aboard, I'm going to give you the nuance. There's the pivot break, there's the run, right to support. Order flow, stochastic momentum, look at the candle halo. And I could just do, honestly, could do, do this forever. Now, we've automated this system. This also has an automated version, which is just not part of this offer. But what I have it on the E-mini, I have it on NASDAQ, crude, gold, the YM, the Russell, and the 6E. Now we're gonna trade it manually. The auto is gonna trade it all automatically. Now let me just go to the offer. And I can see if, there, see if I have any time for any questions, which I may not. Um, but we're on, you, you can call us right now if, if you're interested. I do, and I don't want to run over. Uh, let me run to the offer. Hey, Mark, you're the last presenter, so you can you can have a few extra minutes if you want. That's oh, that's really not great. A problem. Thank you so much. This down a little bit. Move that over. Well, I'll go. I'll go through the um, the slides, and then I will. Uh, um, <laughs> this is just. Hang on one second. Okay. Let me show you the offer. Now, this is what you get with, with, with our offer. You get the Trend3 software, and it's a lifetime license. It's not a lease. Um, if we upgrade it or we make it better, um, you get that upgrade and you get that add-on. You also get, it's, tr it's a 12-hour uh, tutorial on how I trade options. And um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a really good options trader. I, I mean, there are a lot of good traders, a lot of good options traders. I like to think of myself as, as one of them. Um, you're gonna get a rapid results quick start guide where if you have any tech savvy, uh, in 15 minutes, you'll have the whole system up and running. If you don't, um, we'll, we do the whole white glove installation for you. I mean, Sergio, we have here full time. He has a master's degree in computer science and he'll format all the charts for you. Um, we'll also give you all the Unirenko settings if you want to do Forex, if you want to do stocks or you want to do all of them. I mean, we'll give you all the, all the settings to, to do that. You're also, gonna, you're also gonna come into a master class that I'm gonna give you to just review the system with you and show you those three different entries. 
We call them entry one, two, and three, very inventive. But all of them work. Now, again, you get the free lifetime updates. Uh, you know, unlimited VIP support, it goes without saying. Basically, I, I, um, it, you know, it, it doesn't really refer to anybody in this webinar, but I've, ta I've called to tons of, I've called tons of companies to ask questions. I get, I get answering machines, I get answering services. I never get a call back. I mean, seriously, we're in the office 10 hours a day. If you ever call us, we're here. I mean, Rory's my, my go-to guy um, and he will triage your call appropriately, whether it's tech or whatever that your issue is, we will handle it for you. And we are always here. And the first 10, I'm giving out my options alert newsletter. My options alert newsletter are all my options picks. And I'd like, I like to say, I, I'm a really good options picker. And along with the options, uh, with the perfect options module, you're gonna learn how I trade options. Um, the nuts and bolts, if I have an extra minute, is that I look for unique options activity where there's a significant, uh, where big money is piling into a position. Now, big money isn't always right. And we still have to look at the technicals on the trade. I mean, recently there was big money going into JetBlue, going into Macy's, I didn't follow. But there was big money going into Facebook and I did follow. Uh, and there was big money going into Casey's General Store and I did follow. And those options are doing great. Big money going into Visa and I did follow. Uh, so um, you're gonna get all these uh, options trades and you can get them e either and or via newsletter or via text message. I almost always take them in the evening time, so you have plenty of time to create the position. I don't create complex positions. I usually buy a call, buy a put, create a vertical uh, spread or a calendar spread. I usually don't do anything more, more complex than that. Um, now, this, this is off by a zero, but, but I'm up 240%. Um, in the last two years. And that's on uh, 87 trades that I've taken in the, in the last two years. Um, what, what, if, if you come aboard, I'll, I'll show you all my closed trades. They're all on the newsletter itself. And I, 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 my, my losers are usually on my riskier trades. Um, the ones that I, I think are pretty solid uh, are, are usually make it, and, I, and I'm very conservative. I mean, if you risk, uh, if you, I usually look for a, uh, a position where if you're risking 40, 40 cents, you can make 60. So here's the offer. Um, the, the, the whole special is $697 with free upgrades for life. You get one month in the live trading room with me every morning. You're gonna get that perfect options masterclass, which is 12 hours long. And, and I promise you it's gonna make you a better options trader, um, if not a successful one. You get the quick start guide if, if, if you wanna just upload the system yourself. You get free updates for life. And the first 10 traders will get my month. It's not a month, it, it, it's, um, it's 12 months. And usually I publish two a week, sometimes three a week, sometimes one a week, depending upon how, depending on, you know, how, how options activity is moving. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna uh, in, infringe on um, and David and, 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 and everyone's time too much. I wish I could, I, I'm, and I'm not gonna answer any questions, uh, just because I could go till 3.30 and I don't want to hold people here that long. If you have a question, just call us at 786-732, I'll put it over here, 732-4656. Rory's there, he'll answer your question for you. If you're overseas, you can Skype us at Rightline Trading. And the offer is at rightlinetrading.com forward slash product forward slash special offer. So um, I hope to see you aboard. I, I hope to see you in the live trading room on Monday. Like I said, we're looking for that grand. Sometimes we make more. 
um, sometimes a little less, but we look for that 4,000 a month and we only trade two contracts. And um, we can set you up to trade any market you like, futures, Forex, or stocks. And we are opening up a Forex room, which is gonna be opening up very, very, very shortly if you're a Forex trader. So I thank you so much, David, I thank you uh, for giving me um, the extra time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope to see uh, uh, a lot of you aboard. I mean, my goal is to make you money. Uh, and to make you successful. And, uh, and listen, I wish, you the, the, I wish you a great Saturday afternoon and a great weekend. And again, thank you so much, David. Thank you.